What if everything you know, every touch, every emotion, every memory, was nothing more than lines of code in an advanced computer simulation? The concept of reality has been a topic of intrigue and debate for philosophers, scientists, and thinkers for a millennia. In recent years, the theory that we may be living in a simulated reality has gained much attention. This idea is simply known as simulation theory. I know, I know. While simulation theory might sound like some straight up matrix type shit, it's not as far fetched as it may seem. With the incredible pace of technological advancements, especially in virtual reality and AI, the lines between what's real and simulated are blurring. If we are in a simulation, what does that mean for humanity? As technology advances and our understanding of reality deepens, the simulation hypothesis has transformed from a fringe notion to a legitimate scientific proposal. Kind of. Long before the age of quantum physics and advanced computer simulations, the seeds of this profound question were sown. What is the nature of our reality? Is it all just the musings of a philosopher? the dream of a poet, or have we always been on the brink of this astonishing revelation? While the ancient philosophers did not discuss simulation theory as we understand it today, they did pose questions about the nature of reality that resonate with this contemporary hypothesis. Plato's Allegory of the Cave presented in his work The Republic, is perhaps one of the most evocative ancient allegories resonating with simulation theory. In this allegory, prisoners are chained inside a cave, seeing only the shadows cast on a wall from objects behind them, lit by a fire. For these prisoners, the shadows are their reality. One prisoner, when freed and exposed to the outside world, realizes the shadows were mere representations, and not real. Plato's allegory questions the nature of reality and suggests that the tangible world might be a mere shadow or representation of a higher, more authentic reality. This mirrors the idea of simulation theory, where what we perceive as real is just a projection or a simulation of a more profound reality. A foundational figure in modern Western philosophy, Descartes is famous for his method of systematic doubt. In his Meditations on First Philosophy, he contemplated the possibility of being deceived by a malevolent demon which could manipulate his senses and thoughts. While Descartes didn't think we were in a simulation per se, the idea that our perceived reality might be a complete illusion created by some external deceiver, aligns with the premises of simulation theory. Berkeley, an idolist philosopher, proposed that the material world only exists as perceptions in our minds. According to his philosophy, objects exist only when they are perceived. While Berkeley's reasoning stemmed from a theological perspective. He believed that all perceptions were directly sustained by God. His ideas challenged the distinction between perception and reality in ways that can be related to the idea of a simulated universe. 
In more modern times, with the advancement of technology and the concept of virtual realities, these ancient and early modern philosophical inquiries into the nature of reality have taken on new dimensions, leading to the exploration of simulation theory as a potential explanation for our existence. Modern contemplation of simulated reality, however, is deeply rooted in technology. It's influenced by advancements in computer science, artificial intelligence, and quantum physics. As we design more intricate virtual realities and sophisticated video games that emulate real-world experiences, the line between them becomes not so clear. At the heart of the debate about simulation theory lies a profound human desire to understand our place in the vast expanse of existence. It's an existential question that delves deep into our psyche, touching on the core of our fears, hopes, and curiosities. When we think about the vastness of the universe and the intricate details of our daily experiences, the idea that all of this could be a mere simulation is both haunting and fascinating. For some, believing that we might be part of a grander design or experiment gives a sense of purpose. If we're in a simulation, then perhaps there's a reason, a narrative, or a lesson. This belief can be a comforting thought for those who grapple with existential anxieties, as it suggests that there might be a purpose to life beyond what we can see or understand. And our rapidly evolving technological landscape adds fuel to this fire of contemplation as we immerse ourselves in the increasingly sophisticated virtual realities, the lines between digital and tangible blur. When a virtual forest can evoke the same emotional response as a real one, it's not too far-fetched to imagine our entire reality could be a construct. This resonance with our daily experience in the digital age makes the theory more palpable. On the other hand, there can be a visceral resistance to this idea, to accept that our joys, sorrows, triumphs, and tragedies might be mere lines of code, it's unsettling. It challenges the authenticity of our experiences and feelings. Many would argue that our emotions, so raw and real, cannot be mere simulations. The genuine laughter of a child, the heartbreak of loss, or the thrill of falling in love, these profound moments give weight to our existence, making it hard for some to believe that they could be artificially orchestrated. Skepticism also emerges from a need for empirical evidence. In a world where science and reason are pillars of understanding, the speculative nature of the simulation theory doesn't set well with many. It's a theory that's challenging to test. And for those who rely on tangible proof, this lack of verifiability makes it hard to embrace. There's a philosophical elegance to the idea that the universe, with all its mysteries and complexities, is a natural phenomenon. To believe in the organic evolution of the galaxies, stars, planets, and life feels intrinsically beautiful to some. It paints a picture of a universe where, against all odds, life emerged, evolved, and pondered its own existence. In essence, the debate around simulation theory is as much an emotional and philosophical journey as it is a scientific one. It pushes us to confront our deepest insecurities about existence, challenges, our perceptions of reality, and in doing so, makes us more profoundly human. While the idea that reality is an illusion has ancient philosophical roots, the modern iteration that we might be living inside a computer-generated simulation has been significantly influenced by technological advancements and has been championed by folks like Elon Musk and philosopher Rick Bostrom. Nick Bostrom a professor at Oxford University is primarily known for his work on existential risks.
but he gained widespread attention for his 2003 paper, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? Rather than directly claiming our reality is simulated, Bostrom posited a compelling trilemma. He suggested that one of the following has to be true. One, that advanced civilizations would face untimely extinction before reaching the technological prowess to design ultra-realistic simulations. Or, upon achieving such capabilities, they would just lose interest, deterred by ethical quandaries, resource limitations, or changing societal values. However, if these two scenarios don't come to pass, then we are in fact dwelling within a vast, intricate simulation. This paper sparked significant debate among scientists, philosophers, and thinkers about the nature of our reality. Enter Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla and Dork Supreme. Musk's thoughts on simulation theory gained widespread media attention when, during a 2016 interview at the Code Conference, he stated, The odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. Musk's reasoning stems from observing the trajectory of technological advancements. He pointed out that video games, for instance, have evolved from the rudimentary graphics to near photorealistic visuals and vast virtual worlds of today's games in just a few decades. Given this exponential progress, Musk posits that, assuming any rate of improvement at all, that games will become indistinguishable from reality. And if such a trajectory continues, it becomes statistically more likely that we are in one of these many simulations rather than a base reality. Furthermore, Musk also speculates about the nature of such a simulation, suggesting that it could be a way for future civilization to understand its past or for a radically advanced entity to entertain or study itself. It's pretty amazing to imagine, isn't it? And it's not all that far-fetched. If and when such high-fidelity simulations become commonplace, there could exist billions of these universes running in tandem. If that's the future scenario, Musk argues the statistical likelihood that we're already currently living in the one and only base reality, the original universe, becomes almost infinitesimal. Instead, it's statistically more probable that we're in one of these countless simulations. While the concept itself is kind of mind-boggling, Musk doesn't stop there. He delves into the possible purposes behind such a simulated reality. One proposition is educational. Future civilizations might run simulations to understand their ancestors better, examining how they live, interacted, and made decisions similar to how historians today study ancient civilizations, but with a much more immersive, hands-on approach. Another possibility is pure entertainment. Just as we engage with video games or movies today for escapism, enjoyment, or to experience different scenarios, a future hyper-advanced entity might use these universe-scale simulations as a form of recreation, exploration, or even research. It's really fascinating how Musk's perspective really brought this idea from just philosophical debates and tech geeks into everyday chats. Whether or not you buy into it, you've got to admit that Musk's way of framing it makes us think deeply about how tech can influence or even change how we see our own existence. Maybe we should be hopeful that this is a simulation because otherwise... Then there's Brian Greene. The theoretical physicist and string theorist has spoken out about the possibility, it's certainly possible, that what we call the universe, with all its perceived laws of physics, is just some experiment in some entity's basement. Then there's Max Tegmark, a cosmologist at MIT, 
Tegmark has expressed that if the simulation hypothesis is valid, the universe should have signs of being composed of finite computational resources. So far, he sees no clear indication of such limits. Do you ever feel like you've done or been somewhere before? Simulation theory posits that maybe you have. The Mandela effect refers to the phenomena where a large number of people remember something in a particular way, but it turns out to be incorrect or different in reality. It is named after the false memory some had of Nelson Mandela dying in the 1980s, even though he actually passed away in 2013. Another good example is Sex in the City versus Sex in the City. Many recall the popular TV show's title has Sex in the City, but it's actually Sex and the City. And then there's Jif versus Jiffy Peanut Butter. While some people remember Jiffy Peanut Butter, the brand's actual name is Jif. Some remember the chocolate-covered wafer bar brand known as having a dash, Kit-Cat, but it's actually just Kit Kat without the dash. Fruit Loops versus Fruit Loops. The correct spelling for the cereal Fruit Loops is F-R-O-O-T, representing the loop-shaped fruit-flavored cereal, even though some remembered it as being spelled F-R-U-I-T, Fruit Loops. Many people remember Curious George, the mischievous little monkey from children's books, as having a tail. In reality, George is a tailless chimpanzee, not a monkey. Proponents of the simulation hypothesis have occasionally pointed to the Mandela effect as potential evidence that we are living in a simulation. If we're in a simulated environment, there might be occasional glitches or updates in the simulation. The Mandela effect could be a result of these glitches or changes made by whoever or whatever is running the simulation. For example, maybe a change was made in the simulated history but not all data points, i.e. human memories, were updated successfully, resulting in these discrepancies. Or it could be memory manipulation. In a simulated world, it might be possible for the programmers or controllers of the simulation to manipulate or alter memories. The Mandela effect might be a manifestation of such manipulations, either intentional or accidental. Some interpretations of simulation theory posit that there are multiple simulations or parallel universes running concurrently. The Mandela effect could be the result of bleed-through memories from one simulation to another. But what about the sensation of deja vu? where a person feels that they've experienced a particular situation before, despite knowing that it's a new experience. It's a fascinating psychological phenomenon. If our reality is a simulation, deja vu could be a momentary replay or reset of a particular scenario. The sensation of having been there before might result from a glitch where an event or a moment is accidentally played more than once, causing us to experience a momentary overlap. The sensation could arise if there are multiple simulations or parallel universes running concurrently, and at times there might be bleed-through experiences from one simulation to another. Deja vu could be a fleeting memory or an echo from an experience in another simulation. In a simulated environment, there might be occasions where memory data is incorrectly accessed or displayed. An unexpected memory read might cause a brief overlap of past and present simulated experiences, leading to the sensation of deja vu. If our reality is a simulated construct, it might use predictive techniques to render events before they happen similar to how some video games anticipate players' movements. If the simulation briefly exposes us to a predictive event before it happens, it could trigger a feeling of deja vu when the event actually unfolds. If we think of our experiences as software, deja vu could be a sensation we get when there's a minor patch or update in our simulated reality. 
like how a computer might momentarily freeze or stutter during an update. We might experience deja vu during a momentary recalibration of our simulated environment. Now, while this might all sound like poppycock, there are some scientific arguments in its favor. Quantum indeterminacy, also known as the observer effect, is a fundamental concept within quantum mechanics. It refers to the phenomena where quantum systems do not have a definite state unless they're measured or observed. This aspect of quantum mechanics has intrigued proponents of the simulation hypothesis. They draw an analogy between the observer effect and resource optimization in computer simulations. Take, for example, a sophisticated video game. In order to conserve computational resources, the game doesn't render every part of its expansive world in full detail all the time. Instead, it focuses on the portions that the player is currently observing or interacting with, rendering them in high resolution. Areas that are out of sight might exist, but in a lower resolution state, or might not be loaded at all until the player approaches them. By this logic, some proponents of simulation hypothesis argue that quantum indeterminacy is evidence of similar computational conservation. The universe, or simulation we're in, doesn't render the states of quantum particles until they are observed, conserving its computational power. The double slit is a famous experiment in the realm of quantum physics. It's often used to showcase the bizarre behavior of tiny particles like electrons or photons when observed. Imagine you have a wall with two narrow slits close to each other. Beyond this wall, you place a screen. You then shoot tiny particles, like light or electron, at the two slits. If you think of these particles like tiny bullets, you'd expect that after shooting many of them, you'd see two bands or clusters of hits on the screen, aligned with the two slits, right? After all, the particles should just go straight through the slits and hit the screen behind. But here's where things get weird. Instead of just two bands, you see multiple bands on the screens, as if the particles are behaving like waves that interfere with each other, like ripples in a pond. This is odd because you're sending individual particles, not waves. But here's the twist. When you try to peek and see which slit a particle goes through by placing detectors on the slits, the interference pattern, the multiple bands, disappears, and you get the expected two bands or clusters on the screen. It's almost as if observing the process changes it. When you're not trying to directly observe or measure which slit the particle goes through, it seems to behave in this strange wavy pattern, creating multiple bands on the screen, as if it's going through both slits at once. But the moment you put a camera, a detector, at the slits to see exactly which one the particle goes through, the particle chooses one slit. In essence, just the act of trying to watch or measure the particle seems to change how it behaves. This is one of the most puzzling aspects of quantum mechanics. The double slit experiment challenges our everyday intuition about the nature of reality. It suggests that particles can behave both as particles and waves, depending on how you observe them. This dual nature and the role of observation are foundational aspects of quantum mechanics, making the double slit experiment a cornerstone in our understanding of the quantum world. It's important to note that while the analogy between video game rendering and quantum indeterminacy is intriguing, Many physicists and scientists caution against drawing definitive conclusions from this comparison for several reasons. Even the most advanced computer simulations we have today are vastly simpler than the complexities of quantum systems. Using current paradigms of computational logic to explain quantum phenomena might be a major oversimplification. Many physicists argue that these phenomena don't necessarily point to a simulated reality, but are just fundamental aspects of our universe's makeup. Several other prominent scientists have spoken out about simulation theory. 
Neil deGrasse Tyson, for example. The astrophysicist and science communicator thinks the simulation hypothesis is as valid as any other proposal and suggests that there's a better than ever chance that we're living in a simulation. It's hard to argue against the possibility that all of us are not just the creation of some kid in a parent's basement programming up a world for their own entertainment. If we consider that we might be living within a sophisticated digital environment, several profound implications arise, fundamentally altering how we perceive our existence, our morals, and even our faith. If we are a part of a grand simulation, our entire understanding of life and existence would need recalibration. Everything we perceive from the vastness of galaxies to the intricate details of quantum mechanics might be products of lines of code rather than naturally occurring phenomena, which leads to the philosophical question, what is real? If our experiences, emotions, and perceptions are consistent and coherent, does it matter if the foundation is digital rather than physical? For many, life's meaning is derived from a mix of personal experiences, societal constructs, and existential beliefs. If our reality is simulated, it begs the question, is there a higher purpose behind the simulation? Or are we mere entertainment, an experiment, or perhaps a form of digital evolution? The answers, or lack thereof, could lead to existential crisis, or conversely, a liberated sense of purpose, unfettered by previously held beliefs about the universe. Paradoxically, the simulation hypothesis could lead to a heightened appreciation for life, whether organic or digital, the experiences, joys, pains, and sorrows might be perceived as equally valuable. After all, a simulated sunset can be just as breathtaking as a real one if our perception and emotional experience of it remains unchanged. And then there's the moral implications. The simulation hypothesis might challenge the very notion of free will. If our actions are determined by algorithms or an external programmer's whims, it significantly influences philosophical debates about determinism and agency. Can we be held morally accountable for actions that have been predestined or pre-programmed? A simulated environment might imply different consequences for actions. If our reality has different rules than we believed, or there's another layer of existence outside the simulation, then traditional notions of consequence, retribution, and justice might need reevaluation. Do moral acts have the same weight if there's just a possibility of resetting the simulation, or if the suffering within the simulation isn't genuine? The simulation hypothesis introduces a new dimension to the age-old question of creation. If we're in a simulation, then there is arguably a creator or a set of creators, those responsible for programming and running the simulation. This idea could either align with or challenge various religious doctrines. Is the programmer God? Or is the programmer an intermediary? another being seeking answers, much like humans have done throughout history. Many religions offer explanations about the afterlife or the continuation of the soul. If our reality is simulated, it could challenge the concept of an eternal soul altogether. If humanity accepts that its existence might be simulated, it could lead to heightened interest in creating more advanced simulations. After all, if our creators could simulate an entire universe, what's stopping us from doing the same given enough technological advancement? While we don't have any concrete evidence for a simulation, some physicists have mused about what such evidence might look like. For example, 
there might be constraints on physical processes that look like computational shortcuts, or there might be errors within the simulation that manifest as inconsistencies in the laws of physics. Just as computer games sometimes glitch with characters suddenly disappearing or moving unexpectedly, if our universe was a simulation, we might expect to see unexplained phenomena where objects suddenly change position or state without any apparent reason. Some might point to UAPs, the Bermuda Triangle, or even some other cryptid sightings as another potential example of this. Just as tiled video game backgrounds reuse the same patterns, we find large-scale structures in the universe that suspiciously repeat in a way that isn't consistent with our current understanding of cosmic formation. The Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio are mathematical concepts that frequently appear in nature, art, architecture, and various other realms. The Fibonacci sequence is a set of numbers that starts with a zero followed by a one and then another one, and then by a series of steadily increasing numbers. The sequence follows the rule that each number is equal to the sum of the preceding two numbers. The sequence can theoretically continue to infinity using the same formula for each new number. Some flowers often have a number of spirals that correspond to Fibonacci numbers, Pine cones and pineapples also display spirals of seeds or scales that frequently adhere to Fibonacci numbers. If our universe were a simulation, it might be programmed to favor or produce optimal configurations to conserve computational resources, similar to how video games are designed for efficiency. Such a predictable and consistent growth pattern in nature could be seen as evidence of a set, non-random rule akin to the predictable algorithms in computer programs. The Parthenon in Athens exhibits dimensions that are in proportion with the golden ratio, as does the Great Pyramid of Giza. The ratio is often associated with aesthetically pleasing designs. The reoccurrence of the golden rule here in human-made structures across cultures and time could suggest an inherent design principle embedded in our simulated programming, guiding our preferences. Simple rules leading to complex outcomes, like exponential growth from straightforward reproductive rules, resemble computational processes, suggesting our reality might be algorithm-based. The growth of rabbit populations when idealized and simplified, can be modeled using the Fibonacci sequence. Starting with a single pair, the sequence represents how many pairs there are after each breeding cycle, capturing the essence of exponential growth. The Fibonacci sequence could be in use in a simulation for several reasons, like resource limitations. Just as video games have edges or boundaries, there could hypothetically be areas in the universe where one simply cannot go, or probe beyond. Not because of physical distance, but because the simulation doesn't extend that far. There might be computational constraints. For instance, if simulating every particle in the universe were too computationally intensive, the simulation might only render particles when they're being observed, a kind of extreme take on the observer effect in quantum mechanics. Many thinkers and scientists remain skeptical of the simulation hypothesis. Some of their criticisms revolve around it being unprovable, while others believe it's a non-scientific, philosophical, or metaphysical proposal that can't be tested empirically. These detractors hail from diverse disciplines, including physics, philosophy, and cognitive science, and their skepticism is grounded in a range of empirical and logical concerns. One of the most potent critiques of the simulation hypothesis comes from its perceived lack of falsifiability. Sir Karl Popper, a philosopher of science, once stated, insofar as a scientific statement speaks about reality, it must be falsifiable, and in so, as it is not falsifiable, it does not speak about reality. 
In other words, for a claim to be considered scientific, there must be conceivable evidence that could prove it wrong. Critics argue that the simulation hypothesis doesn't meet this criterion. Physicist and cosmologist Lawrence Krauss stated in an interview with The Guardian, I can't prove it's impossible, but I think it's so unlikely. We always make these arguments that are based on possibilities and not on the likely realities. Another line of criticism pertains to the conflation of metaphysical or philosophical claims with empirical scientific ones. Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the well-known astrophysicist, while conceding that it's hard to argue against the possibility of a simulated universe, has also emphasized the distinction between what's philosophically interesting and what's scientifically verifiable. The day we learn that it is true, I will be the only one in the room saying I'm not surprised. But he also pointed out that without empirical evidence, the discussion remains in the realm of philosophy. Some detractors argue against the very premise that it would even be computationally feasible to simulate an entire universe in all its complexity. Dr. Sabine Hassenfelder, a research fellow at the Frankfurt Institute of Advanced Studies, argues that the computational requirements to simulate every single particle in the universe are far beyond what's theoretically possible even assuming a hyper-advanced civilization. In a video on her popular YouTube channel, she says, to store the data for just one human body, you'd need more memory than there are atoms in the universe. So, unless you're willing to argue that future civilizations will find a way to violate the currently known laws of nature, then simulating an entire universe down to the last atom is simply impossible. Oh, and about those Fibonacci numbers we talked about, there are also perfectly logical natural reasons for the emergence of Fibonacci numbers in nature that don't rely on any idea of a simulation. Evolutionary processes tend to favor configurations that are more efficient or increase the chances of survival and reproduction. Patterns or sequences like the Fibonacci numbers, which inherently provide some advantages in certain contexts, like efficient packing, would then naturally emerge more frequently in biological systems. Many processes in nature involve self-similar growth, where a pattern repeats itself on different scales, like branching in trees or the structure of certain shells. The Fibonacci sequence and the associated golden ratio describe one of the simplest and most efficient of such growth patterns. While the reoccurrence of the Fibonacci sequence in nature is intriguing, it can be seen as a result of natural selection, growth patterns, and the inherent mathematics of optimal configurations, rather than an indication of an underlying simulation. Natural processes gravitate towards efficiency and optimization, and the Fibonacci sequence often represents an efficient solution to various biological and physical problems. Several critics of the simulation hypothesis focus on the moral implications of such a scenario. Dr. David J. Chalmers, professor of philosophy and neuroscience at NYU, while open to the idea of a simulated universe, poses the ethical question. If we are in a simulation, is it ethically okay for our simulators to simulate our suffering? Occam's razor is a philosophical and scientific principle, suggesting that all things being equal, the simplest explanation tends to be the right one. Some critics invoke this principle to challenge the simulation hypothesis. The idea is that positing an external simulating entity introduces unnecessary complexity when simpler explanations suffice. Astrophysicist and author Paul Davies commented on this, suggesting to postulate a multi-layered reality with fake layers indistinguishable from certain real layers seems baroque. The simulation argument at its core challenges the nature of reality. However, some critics argue that reality and consciousness are intrinsically linked, 
suggesting that even if we were in a simulation, it wouldn't diminish the authenticity of our experiences. Dr. Deepak Chopra, while discussing the nature of consciousness, states, reality is not in the physical world as it appears to be. It is in where we interpret the physical world. For critics like Chopra, the debate becomes less about the material nature of the universe and more about the subjective experience of consciousness and how it interprets reality. reality. The simulation hypothesis, while rooted in philosophical and scientific discourse, has found ample representation in pop culture, particularly within the last few decades. Films, television shows, books, and video games have all explored the idea that the world as we know it might be a constructed reality. This theme resonates with audiences, tapping into both existential fears and the allure of otherworldly possibilities. Simulation theory and pop culture provides a mirror to our society's anxieties, curiosity, and the ever-blurring lines between the digital and the tangible. As technology becomes more integrated into our lives and our understanding of reality continues to evolve, pop culture will undoubtedly keep revisiting and reimagining the theme of simulated existence. The rise of artificial intelligence, AI, and the discussions surrounding simulation theory are intrinsically interwoven. As AI systems become more sophisticated and our understanding of reality deepens, certain parallels and intersections between the two concepts emerge, making simulated reality seem all the more likely. In video games and virtual worlds, AI-driven characters, non-player characters, or NPCs, can display behaviors mimicking consciousness, raising questions about the nature of their existence. If an AI in a simulated environment believes it's alive or real, it parallels the idea of humans potentially being simulations within a larger system. A key question in the AI community is whether a sufficiently advanced AI could gain consciousness. If an AI becomes self-aware within our universe, it could be analogous to humans becoming aware of a simulated reality. Just as we might use the Turing test or other measures to determine AI's consciousness or intelligence, a hyper-advanced civilization could use similar tests to gauge our awareness or comprehension of the universe. Or simulation. If we're in a simulation and we create AI-driven virtual realities, those are essentially simulations within a simulation. This recursive idea of nested realities can continue indefinitely. AI operates based on its programming and the data it processes. If our universe is a simulation, humans might similarly be following a predetermined algorithm of set rules, challenging our concepts of free will. AI models, especially in machine learning and neural networks, often evolve through iterative processes, learning and adapting over time. This digital evolution could be seen as a microcosm of broader simulated evolutionary processes in the universe, suggesting a possible mechanism for how a simulated universe might operate. Some proponents of simulation theory suggest that unexplained phenomena or glitches in our universe might be evidence of our simulated nature. In the realm of AI, debugging is essential to refine the system. Any irregularities or anomalies in an AI's behavior are analyzed and rectified. As we push the boundaries of AI, these questions will become even more pressing, urging us to reevaluate our understanding of consciousness, reality, and the very nature of existence. A key question in the AI community is whether a sufficiently advanced AI could gain consciousness. If an AI becomes self-aware within our universe, it could be analogous to humans becoming aware of a simulated reality. 
AI operates based on its programming and the data it processes. If our universe is a simulation, humans might similarly be following a predetermined algorithm of set rules, challenging our concepts of free will. The evolution of artificial intelligence has substantially affected our perception of reality and makes the idea of a simulated reality a little more feasible. As AI systems become increasingly sophisticated, the distinction between what is simulated and what is real is not so transparent anymore. The notion that our very existence might be nestled within a grand simulation is both breathtaking and in moments slightly unnerving. It's a thought that, like gazing up at a starlit sky or delving into the vastness of the universe, awakens a sense of wonder and a tinge of existential mystery within us. While we stand here without irrefutable proof on either side of this cosmic riddle, the simulation theory offers a mesmerizing prism through which we can reflect on the age-old questions of reality, existence, and the intricate dance of consciousness. Whether we're living within a grand designer's construct or the tangible universe we've always known, our very journey of questioning, of marveling, and of ceaselessly exploring stands as a tribute to the infinite wonder that is the human spirit.